here we go. Frost with the early jump. Malukas in behind. DeFrancesco in that bright yellow car in third. Malukas popping to the outside. Does he have enough run? Around the outside. David Malukas, they touch, they go around. DeFrancesco also off. The two on the front row make contact and Toby Sowery emerges as the leader. That was a bold move by David Malukas to try and go around the outside. Daniel Frost didn't quite leave him enough room. We'll see if they can both get rolling here, see if there's any lingering damage. Oh, heartbreak. Frost on the pole for the first time. Malukas came in one point out of the championship lead. Meanwhile, Sowery trying to break through, and that's Linus Lundquist right behind him in that orange car. He is the championship leader by one coming in on Malukas, but he has a chance to catapult. Third in the championship, three back there in the gray and blue car is Kyle Kirkwood. Alex Peroni in the blue Carlin car is fourth, and that's Robert McGinnis and Stingray Robert McGinnis is off track. Wheel to wheel racing all the way through this first lap. It's like these drivers think it's hard to pass around here, and with four miles and some long straights, it's a little easier than last weekend in Detroit. As we see a replay of the start here, and David Maluk has tucked in behind Daniel Frost to use that draft, gets up next to him, has a pretty good run, and there just isn't, I don't know if he pinched him. Yeah, he pinched him down because Daniel Frost gets in the dirt, ran out of road, bounces off the curb and bounces out into David Malukas as we see Devlin DeFrancesco going into the dirt as well. And that's a good look from Toby Sowery that says, thank you very much. I started sixth, I'm in the lead at the exit of turn one. And here's Linus Lundquist going to the inside, trying to go around Toby Sauer, and he gets it done before they even get to the braking zone. That's what the draft can do at Road America. And I think Linus Lundquist took advantage of the push to pass there. He was definitely within that one and a half second range to take advantage of that extra horsepower. Now it will be interesting to see if any of the three cars behind, all within one and a half seconds, use that push to pass to go back by Linus Lundquist. Alex Peroni is right there. Kyle Kirkwood was thinking about that, but now he's going to go for second up the inside into turn number five, side by side, inches apart into the braking zone. Kirkwood on the left, Sowery on the right. Kirkwood right behind the leader, Lundquist. He hangs on to it. Kirkwood up to P2. And Kyle Kirkwood's thinking championship, knowing Linus Lundquist is leading the championship and he has to do everything he can, you know, to stay right there with that 26 car of Linus Lundquist. Alex Peroni here trying to go around the outside into turn five on the brakes. Toby Sowery, the over-under. Alex Peroni takes advantage of Toby Sowery missing the apex to make the move up to third. Oh, nicely done by Alex Peroni and got it done easily going into turn six. So Peroni now for the moment in a podium position. Here comes Kirkwood. He's going to look to go around the outside to try to take the lead that could impact the championship. Kirkwood, can he get it low down in time? He does. Kyle Kirkwood has moved to the front. That was a solid move from Kyle Kirkwood. Consistent, heavy, clean braking. The car looked very settled under him. He was able to take advantage of the push to pass down the straight, get out, get around Linus Lundquist, use that clean braking. And now I think Alex Peroni's on the hunt behind it. Linus Lundquist. Alex Peroni making a run for second here. Lundquist will defend, trying to go the long way around. He's not going to be there this time. Maybe an over-under opportunity, though. Peroni will try to get him up the hill. He made it work already one time. Close here. Side by side through six. Great racing. Both hang on to it, and Peroni is going to get through for second. That was a great move that set up at the exit of turn three, all the way in to turn five. Linus Lundquist missed his break point, slipped past the apex a little bit. Alex Peroni was able to keep his nose in there, and as they got to turn six, Linus Lundquist slid just a little offline. Peroni takes advantage, moves into second. Very impressive work in the Blundstone Carlin car for Alex Peroni, rookie from Australia, now second, trying to chase down Kyle Kirkwood. He has come all the way back from ninth to get to second. We have a mechanical issue for Alex Peroni here. Oh no, here. Peroni running second is slowing down. And now he's picking it back up. You know, he had a, an issue like this at Barber. Do you remember he 
in race one or race two of the season had a weird electrical gremlin that raised his head as he comes to pit lane. Oh, heartbreak for Alex Peroni, who was in position to finish second, still might have had something to say for Kyle Kirkwood. Is it mechanical or anything else? And it looks like there's going to be a run here in the turn five. Peterson on the push to pass button is going to have to go the long way around. Can he clear him before they get to the braking zone? Cannot. Side by side. Not going to do the over under. He's going to try to hang around the outside, and Benjamin Peterson gets it done what for a second. Great move from Benjamin Peterson. He had the the extra horsepower from the push to pass. Almost got clear at the brake zone. Carried that momentum around the outside. Went the long way around. Got the power down. Drove up the hill out of turn five and cleared Linus Lundqvist for second. I thought he went too long. I thought he missed the opportunity for the over under because he stayed in it. And I wonder if there was a little bit of discretion the part of Valor from Linus Lundquist being teammates, not wanting to run into his teammate. Oh, and certainly he has, after Malukas has had the problem today, put himself where he's still within a handful of points back. He's just got to survive in advance right now. What a great move from Benjamin Peterson. That was a lot of fun to watch here in the booth, and I hope Benjamin Peterson enjoyed that in the cockpit as well. Is McGinnis close enough using the draft? Likely using push to pass. Will he pop to the inside? To the inside. McGinnis, can he make it stick for third in the podium? Lundquist trying to come back. Now looking around the outside. Side by side into six. McGinnis has the preferred line. He hangs on. Robert McGinnis has charged from eighth to third. Meanwhile, Kyle Kirkwood heading to the final corner. What a beatdown it has been. Two for two in Detroit. Kyle Kirkwood from third to first at Road America to take over the Indy Lights championship lead. Kyle Kirkwood has won race one in Road America. Man, what, a, what an awesome race there. The, the start was so scary. Oh my God, that was, uh, that was insane. I wasn't, like everyone kind of just swapped up. Next thing you know, I'm stuck on the outside just trying to avoid anything that happens. Hunko's car has got by us and um, no, we were able to just pick him off there. We know we had a fast car ever since the start of this weekend. And man, I couldn't be happier with that outcome. I mean, it looked like, it, it seemed like they fought all the way in the back, but um, no, the first tax, uh, Stellrec, Andretti doing an awesome job keeping this 28 car absolutely on rails. And uh, the past three races have just been incredible. They'll head up the hill. Frost in the red and white car on the inside will control the start. The points leader, Kirkwood, is to his outside, watching for them to go. Frost is off. Malukas this time will tuck in. He'll try to use the draft to run down to turn one. Now he'll come to the inside. Frost left the door open. They're going to go side by side through turn one. They'll touch again. This time, Frost will not have any issues. He'll get through, and so will Malukas to the front of this race. It was a clean start. We'll see how these guys settle out for that long run from turn three down to turn five. Great racing already from start to finish here. And everyone gets through turn one. Alex Peroni was quick yesterday. He's looking on Toby Sowry. Long run down to turn five. Malukas, Frost thinking about the outside. Frost is going to try to go the long way around. Not this time. Kirkwood is there lurking. He'll be able to pick up some ground. Di Francesco in the yellow car, back and forth. Sowry runs in fifth. McGinnis looks outside, then comes inside, side by side. He'll back out of it. They'll get through, but he has the inside position headed up the hill towards six. McGinnis looks like he might be able to get it done. And Peroni's going to try to go with him, side by side. And Sowry goes around with contact and into the wall with damage. Oh, oh no. It, it looked like Toby Sowry didn't realize Alex Peroni was trying to go with Robert McGinnis through turn six there. It'll be interesting to see the stewards' view on that as we go yellow. Yeah, they're going to have to retrieve Toby Sowry. Oh, what a disappointing weekend it's been for him. And some jockeying for position a little further back. Here's Robert McGinnis making that move on Sowry to get into fifth. And then from right behind, this is on board with Sowry. We saw the contact with Alex Peroni. You see an opening, you're trying to take it, and there's a good chance you're right that Sowry just really wasn't expecting to try to go. Green again in Road America. Good restart for Malukas. Kirkwood has a little bit of run on his Andretti teammate. 
It is almost a mile all the way down to turn one. Kirkwood looks outside. Frost looks inside. DeFrancesco lunging back there. Stingray Rob puts a wheel in the dirt, trying to go around the outside of one of the HMD Motorsports cars, hangs onto it, and gets the pass done as they head down to turn three. Stingray Rob and Benjamin Peterson side by side. They can't sort it out there. But the two GRG cars are hooked up together. By the way, Robert McGinnis got a position on DeFrancesco. He's up the fourth. They're thinking about three wide for a moment. There's Peroni with the new front wing. He's trying to get after it again. Peterson looking on Stingray Rob. Not happening there. Further back, that's Bogle and Saravelli. Saravelli in the red car. Peroni's made up one spot past Lashtoshkin as they all try and work their way through turn six. So we see is that Kyle Kirkwood off in the grass at the last corner. Oh. He has lost all his momentum. I talked about the momentum he had coming into the race. He is all the way back down to seventh now. And big swing in the championship from that as they run. Kyle Kirkwood had won three in a row, and he's still dropping back. There's trouble on the number 28 Andretti card. He's just trying to hang on, and he's got to go four miles around if he wants to pit. I wonder if something broke that sent him off the racetrack. It looks like either he has a tire going down or a gearbox that won't cooperate. It's almost like the car won't downshift to the gears he needs it to, which wouldn't have helped him slow the car down in the last corner and would have sent him into the grass. Oh boy, from expanding the championship lead with a possibility at the midpoint, Kyle Kirkwood has a very good chance of falling back to third in points here unless they can make a quick recovery. He went way off, so something's wrong before that. Absolutely, I think it may come down to the either brakes, tire pressure, or the gearbox. If he couldn't downshift and help slow the car using the gearbox, he's lucky it wasn't worse in a corner that had less runoff. As it was, he was able to roll through the grass, get back on, and see if he can gather things back up. Oh, here we go. Robert McGinnis has got a run. He's going to make another try at Daniel Frost. This time he goes to the inside, side by side. Teammates going through turn one, and they race beautifully. No contact, inches apart, and they're still side by side as they head to turn three. McGinnis has the preferred spot. A little lockup for Frost. McGinnis gets through. That was about as close as you can go through turn one, as fast as turn one is without making contact. Robert McGinnis maybe weaving down the straight, trying to break the draft. We'll see if Daniel Frost can use push to pass into turn five. Any impact on the tires? Everybody's locked him up a little bit. McGinnis clears him through five. Battle done for now. What does Frost have with the draft though and push to pass available? Here it is again, Charlie. McGinnis going the short way around this time. Doesn't quite get far enough alongside. Daniel Frost throws the car into turn one. Man, that's oh. close. Look how much they're sliding to the exit. Whoo. Impressive work by Daniel Frost and bravery to stay in it. Around the outside like that, that just that little bit of lockup on the right front is the difference between Robert McGinnis getting the position and Daniel Frost holding on around the outside. Just a couple of more turns to go. Past the last really difficult corner, Canada corner for David Malukas. Back there for third, Peroni looks around the outside. He's gonna have one more run going into turn 12. Final corner for David Malukas, looking for win number four on the season. Hometown Chicago, not too far away. David Malukas has won in Road America to take over the Indy Lights championship lead at the midpoint of the season. <laughs> Hey, first of all, first of all, happy happy Father's Day. Thank you. I saw the relief on your engineer Yancey's face as you came across the line. How relieved were you after that after yesterday's incident? Yeah, I mean, what a Uno reverse card again. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, it started from uh, an incident yesterday, and then I mean. Winning the race today, man, what a mental strain. I had a thank you to Luke. Luke Varley, man, I love you. Thank you so much. He was in turn five in every lap. I mean, people don't understand how much of a mental strain racing is. And he was my therapist every lap, kind of keeping me calm, telling me what I needed to know. Watch the Honda Indy 200 at Mid-Ohio, Sunday, July 4th at noon on NBC.